Hello beautiful people of the internet, how are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to be completing the behind the booktube tag. This tag was originally created by Shelly-ish. I will link her channel down below. This tag has 13 questions designed to ask you about your booktube channel, your booktube experience, and some of your opinions about the community in general. I don't know who out there hasn't done this tag yet and is interested in doing it, so if any of you out there have your own booktube channel and you want to answer these questions, just Consider yourself tagged by me if you do decide to film your own video. Drop a link in the comments and I will go check it out. With that being said, let's just dive in with question number one. Question one is, what has surprised you the most about book two, both in a good way and in a bad way? I think, you know, in a good way, like so many people that I have met here are just so lovely and supportive. Not that like I wasn't expecting them to be lovely and supportive, just I'm like pleasantly surprised by how amazing a majority of people on here are, at least the people that I've interacted with. And I really appreciate that because sometimes, you know, communities on the internet can get very toxic and I feel lucky that people have been very kind and supportive to me by and large. I would say the thing that surprises me in a bad way, um, I think my one of my least favorite things about booktube is I feel like a lot of times people just talk about the same books. You know, there are books that get very hyped on booktube and everybody reads them, everybody talks about them. And it is a little harder if you want to talk about books that aren't as hyped or as popular, or if you're a primary genre is a genre that is not very popular on booktube. And I think just with the way the algorithm works, it's harder to find that content because people seek out reviews of books they're already interested in or they already know they like. And there's not a lot of people who are necessarily searching for unheard of books, if that makes sense. The next question is, how do you balance reading and booktube with the rest of your life? I feel like balancing reading with my life is not that hard because I just read when I want to read. I don't force myself to read if I'm not in the mood to do so. And I do like to, most nights, read a little bit before I go to bed. So that is an easy time to carve out for reading time. As for how do I balance booktube, I film in batches. I usually film at least two videos in one sitting. I just, you know, change my shirt or my makeup or something a little bit. But I think having certain days that are designated filming days makes it a little easier on my schedule because obviously you do have to balance filming time with your other free time. And I like to do filming in batches because then the next weekend I can be like, okay, my weekend is totally free. I don't have to do any booktube videos this weekend. I already have them ready to go. And then when I'm in the mood to film, when I just really feel like filming a bunch of videos, I can do multiple videos that day while I'm super eager about filming booktube. So that's really just my strategy for how I balance it. Question three is, have you ever thought about starting a Patreon? Have I thought about it? Yes. Seriously thought about it? No. So at this point, I still have fewer than 800 subscribers. And I know there are people who have fewer subscribers than me who have started a Patreon. But personally, at this point in my booktube career, I would not feel good about taking money from people. And that's not me snarking on people who do have a Patreon. I just personally would not feel good about it because I don't have a huge subscriber base. I do have a full-time job outside of booktube. And I just don't really want people to give me their money that they work hard for when I don't necessarily need it at this point in time, you know? Um, and even if I did start a Patreon, 
I think at most I would ask people for like five bucks, you know? I have enough money to support my booktube career, for lack of a better term, and I'm not doing it as a full-time job, so I personally would not want to ask people for money at this point in time. I do think if I had a much larger subscriber base, I might start a Patreon or maybe a Ko-fi with just like $5 a month or even like a dollar a month. So it's not like going to be a significant amount of people's paychecks or anything. My attitude is just at this point, like, I don't want to be presumptuous and assume people want to pay for me to be on booktube. And I don't feel like I need the money. So I just personally would not feel good asking for it. Again, that's not me necessarily passing judgment on people who do have a Patreon. That's just my personal feelings about it. Question four is, have you made any mistakes on booktube? I guess that depends on how you define mistakes. I kind of want to say no, because I haven't done anything that I really regret. And I definitely think my videos now are a lot better than they were when I first started. But I don't think that's necessarily a mistake. I think that's just part of the process. Obviously, you learn and you grow. So I wouldn't classify that as a mistake exactly. You know, I think I've always been my authentic self on booktube. And I think I've always treated everybody who comes to my channel with respect. So I don't really regret anything. I definitely think my videos are better now than they were when I started. But I think that's just normal. That's just natural. You learn and you grow and you get better with practice. Question five, do you have any advice for new booktubers? First of all, be yourself, be true to yourself. And remember that ultimately booktube is about having fun. I don't think you should force yourself to read books you're not interested in just because they're popular or make certain kinds of content you don't enjoy because you think it's going to get you more clicks. Ultimately, we're all here because we love books, we love reading, and that's fun for us. So never feel like you need to do things with your channel that are going to take the fun out of reading for you. Also, do not feel ashamed if some people can read a lot faster or a lot more than you do. There are people on booktube who read like 100 books a year. But if you can only manage 50, 20 even, that's fine. You don't need to measure up to other people. You just need to enjoy yourself. And so my advice would be stay true to yourself and do what's going to be enjoyable for you. Reading and filming booktube videos should never feel like a chore. Question six is, what are your thoughts on the YouTube algorithm? Um, I don't love the YouTube algorithm, but at the same time, I don't have any ideas on how it could be better. Uh, I do sometimes feel like I'm fighting a losing battle with the algorithm, and it is frustrating to see that popular channels are constantly getting their videos pushed to new viewers. But since I'm a smaller channel, I'm not as lucky. So it does kind of suck. You know, I also hate that there are so many like, really good channels out there that only have a couple hundred subscribers. And I wish that it was easier for small creators to grow on here. But at the same time, you know, I don't like I don't have an idea for how to solve this problem and I understand why the algorithm is the way that it is. It's just frustrating to see how hard it is for some people to grow even when they're making really good content. And I'm not like saying, oh my god, I have amazing content. I should have 100,000 subscribers. There are other really small booktubers where I discover their videos and I'm like, this person has an amazing presence, great ideas, love their reading taste, and yet they only have maybe, you know, a hundred subscribers. And in my opinion, they deserve more. So it's just a little frustrating to see the same people get pushed and pushed. But 
I also understand that because if a video is getting a lot of likes and a lot of views, then it is indicating that it has a widespread appeal. So I do understand that. If any of you out there do enjoy my videos, giving a thumbs up really does help. So please do that if you are enjoying my content. I do try to like videos from content creators I enjoy, even if I don't always think of something to comment. Question seven is a two-parter. First, how do you decide what videos to make and are you ever overwhelmed with video ideas? Yes, I am overwhelmed with video ideas sometimes. That's why I started making two videos a week because I found when I was only making one video a week, sometimes I would have an idea that I was excited about and I was like, oh, well, my filming schedule is filled for the next two months. So I guess I need to wait three months to film this video. So I do like that I have um, a little bit more space to play around with, with my two videos a week structure. I do think maybe at some point I might have to change it up a little bit because I do worry at some point two videos a week might be too much for me, but we'll see how it goes. And how do I decide what videos to make? This is kind of twofold. And here's another complaint I have about the YouTube algorithm is sometimes I have an idea for a video, but I don't make it because I don't think it's going to be the type of content that the algorithm likes. I don't think it really has a catchy title that I can incorporate SEO keywords into. And so I don't make that video because I just don't know how I would market it. So that is another thing that is a bit frustrating about the YouTube algorithm. But by and large, when I'm deciding what videos I want to make, I'm thinking about what I'm excited to talk about, or I see ideas that other creators have come up with that look like they're fun to me, like for instance, tags and challenges. So ultimately, I do think about markability to a certain degree, but I'm also thinking about what looks like it would be fun, both for me and for my subscribers, hopefully. Question eight is, have you ever regretted posting a video? And I wanna say no. I don't feel like I've ever said anything that I regret on my channel. I have had videos that I don't personally love as much as the others, but I wouldn't describe that as regret necessarily, you know? I do think there are some videos I made in the past that I didn't end up loving how they turned out or I don't think they're as good as the videos I make now, but I think regret is a strong word and I don't really regret anything. I guess the best answer I can give is I think in the future I probably won't make rant videos as much anymore just because I am hoping to become a published author. And so even though rant reviews are not necessarily mean-spirited, I don't think they're the most professional in my personal opinion. So that's a type of content I probably won't make in the future. Maybe if I'm talking about something that's actively offensive, but I think, you know, that's not a content that I plan to make much given my career aspirations at this point in life. So that's probably the closest thing to a regret, but I don't really regret anything. I feel like I've been my authentic self on this channel and I stand by um, the content that I posted. Question nine is, are the number of views slash subscribers meaningful to you? Are the number of views slash subscribers a measurement of success? I'm also kind of going to answer question 10 with this one because it's kind of similar. Question 10 is, are you disappointed by the growth on your channel? And my answer to all of these questions is both yes and no. Obviously, I think everyone who is a content creator wants to have a lot of views and a lot of likes on their content. Everybody is happy when they get a notification saying they have a new subscriber. And, you know, I, like many other people, do sometimes compare myself to others. And sometimes 
I do get upset because I see people who get so many more views than me, or I see people who have only had their channel for a couple months, and yet they have twice the number of subscribers that I do. And as a human being, that's not a great feeling because we frequently compare ourselves to others. And I also just personally, as a person, personally as a person, that sounds weird. I personally have struggled with anxiety and self-esteem issues. So that's something that I've had to deal with. And social media makes it very easy to compare yourself to other people. It can sometimes get you down and make you wonder, okay, why is this person getting so many more likes and comments and subscribers than I am? What's wrong with me? Why can't I have that? But generally speaking, I don't think that you can really determine your success or your self-worth based on your metrics because really like what this should be about is being true to ourselves, having fun and enjoying ourselves. So wouldn't you rather be someone who has fewer subscribers but is having a lot of fun than someone who has many subscribers but is stressing themselves out with their content creation? So it is kind of a yes and no question for me. And sometimes I do get disappointed by the growth on my channel because I've been doing this for years and there are people who just started who have more subscribers than I do. I won't lie, sometimes I do get a little bit down about it, but just think about it this way. So I have over 700 subscribers. If you put 700 people in one room, that would be a lot of people. I don't even know, have I met 700 people in my whole life? Like that's a lot of people when you think about it in those terms. So that's not a failure, that's really good. Like there's 700 people who have liked my content enough to subscribe. I get thousands of views every single month and maybe that's not as much as other people, but that's still a hell of a lot. If you put 2,000 people in one space, that would be crazy. And that's how many people are watching my content per month. So I think it's good to just reframe your thinking about that a little bit, at least in, for me, that's how I try to do it. Question 11 is, have you ever thought about quitting BookTube? The answer is yes, <laughs> but only for like, a minute and then I'll tell myself no that's crazy you're not gonna quit booktube sometimes in those moments where I am getting a little bit down about my channel I do think about giving it up but I always quickly talk myself out of it in a matter of minutes ultimately I think I'm going to keep doing booktube as long as it is something I enjoy and something I still have time for I will quit the day that I stop enjoying booktube or just need to eliminate it from my life due to personal scheduling or mental health reasons. Until that day, I will be here. Question 12 is, what are the most touching or most negative comments? I guess First, let's talk about the negative comments. I don't get a huge amount of negative comments, to be honest, which is great. Like I said, most people are extremely supportive. I think the most common type of negative comment I get is ones that come across as patronizing or mansplaining, where I can just feel the condescension through the computer and this person, usually a male, is telling me why I'm wrong about this certain thing. That is probably the most common type of negative comment I get on my videos. And it is annoying, but usually I just roll my eyes and I'm like, okay, like, yeah, sure. You go tell me why my opinion is wrong, <laughs> whatever. I'm sorry that my opinion makes you that upset. <laughs> I did get a comment on my men's rape in television video, which is the most viewed video I've ever made. And I believe I posted this comment on Instagram because it was just so ridiculous, where this man wrote me like 
a huge paragraph of text. And he was telling me that me speaking out against um, uh, the way men's rape is depicted on television, that meant that I was not okay with how things work in the real world. Like, um, if you think that, like, rape is okay to be normalized on TV because it's part of the real world, then I think that says more about you than it does about me. And then he went on to call me some names and said that if I had problems with sex, I should stick to reading Anne of Green Gables. <laughs> so it was just, like, the rudest, most out-of-touch rant. And, like, I kind of just, like, uh, see, I'm laughing thinking about it because it was so ridiculous. And, like, it did not make me doubt my opinion. It just made me think, like, oh, boy, like, wow. <laughs> I think this is a you problem more than it's a me problem. <laughs> and what are the most touching comments? I mean, honestly, I just get so many touching comments on my videos. You know, anyone who leaves me a positive comment, that means so much to me. And whenever you say something nice on my videos, just know that it, it warms my heart and it totally makes my day every single time. And then the final question is, in regards to BookTube, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, hopefully in five years, I will be able to have the perspective of being a published author. I cross my fingers, really, really hope, you know, I'm querying my first novel now and being a published author is a lifelong dream for me. It's something that's very important to me. So I'm hoping sometime during the next five years that will happen for me. I'm hoping that I will be able to achieve that dream and then be able to come at BookTube from that perspective, you know, and just see where my channel is going to go from there. So that is it for the behind the booktube tag. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to complete this tag on your booktube channel, consider yourself tagged and let me know in the comments so I can go watch your video. If you're still here and you don't know what to comment, why don't you leave a pink heart emoji in the comment section down below. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. My social media links are down below if you want to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or be my friend on Goodreads. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye and I'll see you in the next video.